Good day, everyone. This is Thomas Huddleston, welcoming officer with the Convocation of Episcopal Churches in Europe. As we are planning on reopening our churches and our services and support for refugees and migrants, we wanted to turn to one of the leading organizations that we support here in Europe, the Joel Nafuma Refugee Center in uh, Rome, uh, located in St. Paul's Within the Walls in Rome, to hear about what has been their experience after so many years of this very specific moment, uh, reopening uh, after COVID and vaccinations, what new ideas they have for the services needed to meet today's needs, and what also has been their experience uh, welcoming Afghans and what they would recommend for others who will be welcoming Afghans in the future. So to that, we turn to leadership from the JNRC, to Julia and to Pero, to uh, share their experiences. So first over to you, Julia. Um, for those who don't know anything about uh, the Joel Nafuma Refugee Center, can you tell us a bit about what you do? Yeah, sure. So hello, everyone. I'm Julia Bonaldi. I am, I am the Program and Development Director at JNRC. So JNRC is um, uh, obviously a, a day center for refugees and asylum seekers, and we provide uh, many services. These services are uh, meant to support the um, basic needs. So we provide distributions, breakfasts, essential items, and also, also an emergency fund for uh, urgent expenses that refugees need to do, but also we uh, provide um, assistance in terms of uh, development. So we help refugees um, achieve their goals and uh, the skills they need to enter the job market. Uh, we do this through uh, language support. We teach uh, three languages, Italian, uh, English, and German at two levels. And then we provide a computer course and uh, we have a job clinic that runs twice per uh, week and we help with uh, job search and um, applications for entering the job market yes and uh, any kind of help that might be required we offer also legal help which is a team which works very closely to the JNRC works team and then we provide also support with uh, therapy support. So for those need, for those guests that are uh, seriously traumatized and have difficulties in uh, proceeding with their with their lives. And so, Piero, how has it been uh, for the JNRC reopening uh, the services? Have you had to do things differently? Have you had to create new services uh, that meet new needs? Um, we were very happy and emotionated to reopen the center after almost uh, one year and a half, nearly two. So we were very, very happy. Of course, it's, it's uh, um, quite different because uh, we have to take care of all the uh, instances that, that we need to take care for COVID. So, for example, we need to check the green pass. We have to um, care that they are not so... Uh, they don't gather in too much inside the center. We have also a, a maximum number of people that can um, use the space in this moment because the space has no windows. So it's very uh, difficult to deal with it in case of COVID. But right now, people, I have to say that um, people were very nice with us and very thankful for the reopening. Um, the thing that uh, people seems that they have missed us give us some, uh, I don't know, some self-esteem for the work that, that, that we did in the past. They are very uh, respectful and, uh, and calm right now, and they know that somehow we have to rebuild everything after, after the COVID. So I feel a kind of positive, um, positive atmosphere around uh, in growing up in this new uh, challenge. Also, uh, I have to say also culturally, COVID changed a little bit the vision of the, of the people about uh, migrants. Uh, I mean, uh, before COVID, migrants was the biggest fear to show off to people uh, and, and get their votes. <laughs> Let me be clear. Uh, right now, people fear the virus more than the strangers or the different ones. So uh, I feel that 
of course that doesn't mean that now it's like a dream but uh, i feel a little bit better than than before and um well, for one year and a half we just give like basic real basic services like breakfast like distribution of clothes and we used to make some kind of service like i don't know uh booking an appointment uh to make the to make the id just alone down downstairs and bring in the results to the people outside because no one can come in in uh, at that time and it was very frustrating for us and i think also for them right now uh things are restarting we are trying to uh, build back everything because uh, of course, we have to uh, manage all the COVID uh, problems. And this is create problem, I don't know, of how many people can attend the class, for example, or uh, how many people can join that kind of services. We are doing, people seem to accept it because I feel that they leave this kind of things for one year and a half. And uh, we are trying to uh, restart dif different kind of services. Of course, the most important, in my opinion, are the Italian school that uh, somehow in this uh, um, lock in, during the lockdown was uh, working online. So we do we did something during that time, and uh, I feel the other thing very important is all the generosity works that do the CVs and uh, try to help people searching for job that was active too do during all the COVID lockdown. This is the two things that we think uh, is the most important thing just to make the people really independent. And I feel that our aim is to put the, the people in the condition that they don't, they will not need us no more. This is uh, our perfect uh, solution, let's say, for, for, our, uh, for our job. And maybe, Julia, if you wanted to add um, any new ideas that you have for services based on this experience? Yes, sure. So yes, as Piero said, it has been difficult because we had to reinvent ways to operate. And um, for example, yes, with the Italian course that we resumed online after the end of the first lockdown in May 2020. And we decided to um, empower this course in making it a course which is aimed at job um, integration. So we change a little bit the content of the program and we uh, inserted um, like um, topics that are related to the job market. And that was very helpful. At the same time, another um, like initiative that we had is to um, implement a project that was funded by the um, Niwano Peace Foundation in Japan. And this is, we developed um, in partnership with Italia Hello, which is an organization we work with. With, we developed a digital platform for uh, refugees to um, match uh, job offers and demands. And that is a way that we tried to overcome the obstacles that the um, JNRC works as a service in person had during the COVID. And uh, other initiatives that we have, which we think were very useful during COVID was to reach out to the host community to make it um, aware of the huge uh, challenges that refugees were facing. So for example, we started a two day online course uh, we started it in February 2021 in order to uh, like rise uh, awareness on migration um, uh, matters in general. And this was also very helpful because the situation worsened for everyone in the world with the pandemic, but obviously for vulnerable groups that is even worse. So we needed to make sure to, to point this out as much as possible. Well, over and, the, uh, over yes. the past few year, um, months, we've had much more attention as well to the fate of Afghans uh, who are not only trying to leave Afghanistan now, but 
but also those who are already here um, in our communities as asylum seekers, as refugees, as rejected uh, asylum seekers, and the convocation of Episcopal churches in Europe passed in its uh, convention a resolution that every parish needs to find a, a way to support uh, Afghans who are here or who can come here. And so we wanted to ask um, you, what has been any experiences that you've had uh, recently of Afghans that have been supported um, by the JNRC? Um, I can say a few words and then maybe leave it to Piero who know, directly deals with, uh, with our guests. I just wanted to say that in my experience this last few weeks is, uh, yes, uh, I came in contact indirectly with some of these groups through some organizations. And what I learned is that um, refugees who are arriving in Italy now, and I suppose in Europe, are a little bit different from the guests that we are used to. So they have a very high level of education, but unfortunately, no Italian at all. So for sure, the help they need, apart from a strong legal assistance, is a lot of assistance with uh, the Italian, so language, uh, integration, and also uh, like job placement. Obviously, they need to be supported with work, but I would say through the language assistance first. This is my, my personal experience, but then maybe Piero can add very useful information about this. Uh, yes, we assist Afghans from a long time. I remember that when I started working in GNRC in 2013, they were already the big majority of the people inside the center. Of course, Afghanistan is a place that probably uh, face war in the last three generations or something like that. So, of course, mm, it's very uh, hard to deal uh, sometimes because it's people very um, used to have kind of confrontation and that is very difficult to deal with. At the same time, probably the best friend that I met inside the general scene in the last 10 years are Afghans, people with uh, just brother for me. And uh, I have to say, right now in the center, we still don't have the, the people who escaped from Afghanistan this summer because they have like, a, it's a little bit uh, strange to say, but like a, a privileged road to reach Europe if compared with the Afghans that reached Europe in the last 10 years. And of course, no one, I think, will deny the, um, the asylum to the people who escaped in Afghanistan now because everybody, can see what is going on over there. We have um, supported a lot of Afghan friends or Afghan people who used to uh, come to our center, uh, trying to um, make their parents, their uh, relatives, their friends escape from Afghanistan right now, because it looks like situation is really, really very dangerous. And probably we, we know half of what is really going on over there right now. And uh, it's so sad to know about the, the women. It's so sad to know about the, the, the people who do the sport uh, and cannot even do sports. So the uh, situation over there right now is ve very hard. I'm, I'm wondering what kind of uh, behavior, attitude we have the people who are escaping right now from Afghanistan because I feel that they really... Um, they are really scared of what uh, what happened over there. Probably each and every one have still some links over there that probably make them worry. Um, I have to say, right now, situation is still in uh, in becoming. We are uh, we are waiting to see these people. Right now, probably they are all in the center, the, the, in the, the governative centers, where they are uh, safe. And uh, I don't think that they, they will have problem with the recognizing of the of the asylum, like maybe in the past some Afghan uh, did. So we now have um, thousands of Afghans that will be uh, hopefully finding their ways to a safe place. We have uh, Afghan communities uh, in Europe, in the United States. Um, and yet we also have a huge outpouring of uh, people who want to help. Uh, in the United States, we have Episcopal churches considering to become uh, community sponsors, um, and they are confronted by 
so many people who want to donate uh, their money, their goods, uh, their time. And for a, a group that's never done this before, it can be quite intimidating. They might not know, well, what should we really be doing as, as a local voluntary group? Um, you in Rome um, also experienced this uh, massive surge of solidarity in the refugee welcome movement and the JNRC was right there in the center of this. Would you have any, any recommendations or lessons learned that you would share with a local group? I think that we learn a lesson every day doing this kind of work. Um, what we think and what we really are focused on is trying to make the people independent and let them feel part of the community. And uh, I feel that's the only way that can change and can, I don't want to say remove because probably you will never remove, but just put the traumas that people bring with them uh, one side and try to restart again. What we, what we can recommend is always respect the person, even if different, even if uh, things different of uh, uh, believe in other gods or dress different or whatever. Uh, we have to be, to recognize the humanity of the people. And if we um, are focused on the every, each and every person, I think that that per singular person can do something until we consider the Afghans, like now we have 2,000 Afghans coming. No, that 2,000 person are 2,000 person, each and every one with parents, friends, uh, links and whatever. So I feel that to recognize the singularity of each person is something that can work to uh, create that self-esteem that can uh, give the person the, the strength to, to face reality. I totally agree with Piero. Actually, um, like remembering the human dimension of the migration uh, uh, of, uh, of um, this big and major issue. And uh, this um, also in terms of successes that uh, we can achieve. So never be discouraged because huge numbers can be very discouraging. So always focus on the person to respect that person, but also to remember that one single success is already a success and that will help like organizations keep on going. I would also add that uh, as another, another suggestion, always, always remember to create networks. This is fundamental because um, in every goal that we want to achieve, always remember we cannot achieve it on our own. It's always teamwork that provides success. And, uh, and also um, when we work with uh, vulnerable groups and refugees who need to integrate, always remember that it's not only uh, work that we have to make with them, but also with communities that host them. So we need to work with host communities as, as well, teach them how to uh, include, how to understand people who are different and uh, also, teach the importance of uh, listening, understanding, including. That is very important when we do this kind of work. Well, thank you for, for that inspiration, Julia and Piero. The Joel Nafuma Refugee Center is one that we are also thrilled to support however we can as the Episcopal Church in Europe and the United States. And uh, you can teach us all, I think, how to build welcoming communities, not just in the eternal city where you are, but also in our own home parishes. Thank you so much uh, for your work.